And and I should have predicted. I wasn't quite sure what accent Derek Carr was going to use because sometimes you get a little country from Derek Carr. But I but I I I knew it was going to be guns out for Derek Carr. It always is guns it out always for Derek is. Carr. The sun's out. Always guns always, out. Sun's out. Guns out. Always. So, or when the sun's not out. Yeah. Moon's out. Guns out. Yes. Nothing's out. Clouds out. Guns <laughs> out. Uh, Derek Carr and and Pete has mentioned this to me. He's he's taken the font and made it like 28 point in the outline. So I say this there. He's doing it again. <laughs> Carr has a league high 22 fourth quarter comebacks since 2014. That was his rookie year. Yeah. Matthew Stafford is second at 21. Here's why I don't like that stat. Yeah. Cause this used to be the, the counter, the narrative that Tony Romo always screws something up late and he eventually got past that but the counter was well he's got umpteen fourth quarter comeback so that narrative is really not true the problem is the fourth quarter is 15 minutes long so if you're down three and your offense scores a touchdown the first three minutes of the fourth quarter that counts as a fourth quarter comeback in my mind it doesn't in my mind, it's the last five minutes. Yeah, I That's the stat I want to see. Right. I don't care if you took the lead for good with three minutes left or three minutes in to the fourth quarter. I care whether or not you took the lead for good with just a few minutes left in the game. Yeah, I, I understand. There is a, definitely a difference there to taking. But, but uh, I would say I don't think the Raiders were holding 12-minute leads later in the fourth quarter too, Mike. I would bet you a lot of those comebacks are closer to what you're saying then the Raiders taking the lead with 12 minutes left and that great Raiders defense we've seen over the last six years stop them. So, you know, I, I think you got to give them credit at that. But you're right. The stat is flawed from that standpoint, 100 um, percent. But, hey, Raiders offense looked good, had a lot of answers, explosive plays, not even 100 percent healthy. Josh Jacobs, a new offensive line finding their way. And I think maybe like the 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 brightest spot. And I don't want to change the subject. I haven't even literally looked at our rundown. Just the defense in general, right? I mean, the defense, I think, was the shocker. Uh, almost as much as, you know, Carr moving the ball and the Ravens once they got their, their feet underneath them. But the defense really going down 14 nothing from that standpoint or that point on, I mean, they really controlled the football game for the most part too. I mean, it's other than Lamar Jackson magic runs and like one or two throws – that led to the one touchdown drive for the Ravens in the second half. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about with the Ravens on the offensive side of the ball. So Gus Bradley, another guy, new addition to that team, who invented the Seattle scheme. Gus Bradley invented the Seattle scheme up there with Pete Carroll. And you could see it came through for them last night. And and, and uh, they're, they're going to be a different team on defense. Not saying they're going to be great, but I don't think they're going to be a pushover this year. One thing that was palpable if you watched the game last night, it never shows up on the stat sheets. On both sides of the ball, yeah. it was physical. It was. There were hits. Hits. Whether it was in the open field, whether it was in the scrum, it was a physical game. And it at was. one point I thought, maybe 17 games really isn't a good idea. <laughs> you can't play 17 games like last night. And maybe it's a primetime game thing, but we saw that that – Extreme effort by the Cowboys on Thursday night, the 58 passes. We have said clearly that is not sustainable. And, of course, that riles up some of the folks on Twitter who think you can just dial up 60 passes a game and it's going to have no adverse physical effects on the person throwing 60 passes a game. And the hitting last night, that's not sustainable either, Chris. Guys are not going to make it the full season if they hit like that every single game. There was some serious old-school hitting going on last night. Legal, yeah, but, but very significant and impactful yeah no, i mean the game is crazy right now we just got more fast people big people training all year long i got my personal trainer i know how much grams of protein and fat i'm gonna eat every day and that's where the game has become insane even from compared to when i played I mean, 12 years ago it, it's jumped up another level and hey, we know the ravens right they're gonna be physical that that's their mo we know that well, it's one thing about like John Gruden. I don't think he always gets credit for it. Gruden's teams have been generally physical football teams. Maybe they're not always good enough to really present that over the last few years. But hey, it's about pounding the rock, running the football, you know. And then the defensive side of the ball, hey, that that you know he does have a 
like we've talked about maybe with Kyle Shanahan, they, they want guys that don't hesitate. And I do respect that about the Raiders. We've seen them getting a lot of hitting matchups with the Chiefs last year and some other teams where you go, well, they don't back down from anybody. And when, you know, Gruden's a psycho and Gus Bradley, a defensive coordinator, he's a psycho. And then your special teams coach slash assistant coach, Rich Passaccia, he's a psycho. Yeah, they bring out the psychoness in their football players to where it's just it's 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 balls to the wall and that's all there Hang is on. to it. Sorry, I guess I shouldn't Hang say on. that one. Sorry, London. I don't know about that Hang one. Hang on. I might have crossed on. the line there. So rain me Hang in, on. Mike. Wow. Hold on there, horsey. Okay, that's I won't say that again. <laughs> First of all, I think it's to the wall, not on the wall. Oh, but uh but 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 regard <laughs> regardless. I don't even know what I said. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's only you, only you would have a simsism embedded within a wholly inappropriate statement. But I want to go back a little farther than that. Right. To psychoness because yeah. I got a feeling <laughs> Yeah. It's Chris Sims, Accidental Scholar, with psychoness. <laughs> we will be checking that one Good. for Good. further review. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that's the attitude that they want, but you have to have the right players. Yeah. And the asterisk on last night's game, hey, great, you got the win. Cleveland Farrell, fourth overall pick, 2019. A healthy scratch. Another indictment of the drafting that they've done in recent years. Now, that's balanced out by Max Crosby, sure. a guy they got. Right. Late in the draft that year, who's far better than Cleland Farrell. Yeah. But with that fourth overall pick, I mean, we can pull up the 2019 draft. They could have gotten uh, a lot better player than what Cleland Farrell has turned out to be. And uh, uh, hey, Mike Mack, I saw him on the sideline last night watching the game. They don't make the playoffs this year. He's going to get the blame for everything that's gone wrong with the players that they don't have. And Gruden's going to take the credit for what they're doing now that is working. And they're 1 and 0. Oh, and you know what? So is everybody else in the division. So it's a push through week one. Now, they beat the Ravens. It's not like they beat some cupcake, but but they're one and oh, and so are the Chiefs, and so are the Chargers, yep. and so are the Broncos. But they have to feel good about themselves coming out of that game. Yeah. They have to. A hundred percent. You know, you, you executed at a pretty high level against a complicated, controlled chaos defense. The offensive line, you know, that was a big question mark, right? They were pretty good. They really were. You know, run game and pass game. You know, I mean, they just ran the ball to kind of keep them at bay to a degree. We saw the Ravens players at the line of scrimmage like that. It wasn't the game that you were going to be able to run a lot with eight and nine people at the line of scrimmage all the time. That's going to be a work in progress. We'll see where that goes. But I do think just overall the fight of the team, you know, a clutch win like that, and then the defense looking the way it did is certainly something to build on. You know, Gus Bradley is going to have that defense – you know, play at a, a higher level, being more sound. I don't think you're going to see them bust coverages a whole lot, you know, or make mistakes. And I think that's the encouraging thing, too, you know, for this this uh, Las Vegas Raiders team, too. Because, you know, when you get a healthy Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake in the backfield with Waller and, you know, Renfro, and we can get Ruggs going. And, of course, Edwards looks like he's going to go here. They're going to be tough to match up. Gruden's playbook is certainly diverse enough to use all those weapons, and uh, they got enough weapons there that are going to be hard to, to just say, oh, we'll play them man-to-man. -man. Um, so th they do have something to build on here. We'll see. It's tough to, tough division, tough conference, but we'll see how it goes. You know what their reward is for winning on Monday night. You know what they get next, don't you? No, Short I didn't week, even... cross-country at the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ooh. a rekindling of one of the great rivalries of the 70s. And, you know, in recent years, while the Raiders have struggled and the Steelers have been good, you get Raiders at Steelers, and the Raiders play them tough. I remember your guy Bruce Gradkowski yeah, going right? in there, Pittsburgh right. native, and beating the Steelers at a time when the Raiders weren't very good, and he took the Steelers down at Heinz Field. So I'm not going to assume that it's going to be Steelers whitewash, but – I, I tell you what, that's a that's a tall order. The way they played last night and playing an extra six minutes, yeah. a physical overtime session on Monday night, turning it around for Sunday on the road from Las Vegas all the way to Pittsburgh, that's not going to be an easy task for the Raiders to get to 2-0, oh, Chris. No, no, it will not. I think there's two things, though. Hopefully Gruden and the Raiders spent a little time during preseason and training camp getting ready for the Steelers to a, to a degree to have a little base of the game plan. And the other thing I'll just say that's a good thing for them, 
Steelers' defense has controlled chaos, too, just like Baltimore. Not exactly the same scheme, but again, it's lots of pressures, different looks on the back end, and that's where I, it will help. It will help the Raiders, the fact that they got to play the Ravens and deal with a lot of different looks uh, and now go to the Steelers to where, you know, again, the Steelers didn't blitz a lot, and we'll talk about that later uh, against the Buffalo Bills, but I don't think that's going to hold true for long. They're, they're still going to be a pressure defense when, when they want to put pressure on an offense and the quarterback. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.